This is Rafi Kuluzon, and you are tuned in to Nothing But That Sports Talk. Yo, Coach, um, Paige Beckers has really progressed on, on the way towards making a comeback. Yep. In, in playing this season. Like, what can you tell me about her, about how is she doing and how is she, and how is she planning to approach the, her comeback season after being out for an entire year? Anytime you're out for a long time, um, it takes a little bit to get back into the swing of things. Uh, she's never been away from the game. She may not have been playing competitively, but she's never been away from the game. Um, so her practices and her individual workouts right now, uh, this is the best I've seen her look, even more so than freshman year. You know, um, unfortunately, you know, it took a, you know that kind of an injury, uh, but. She used it to her benefit, and she's bigger, she's stronger, she's quicker. She's, you know, she just sees things a little bit differently now than she did when she was a kid. Um, so the things that are gonna that are gonna be so evident is how different she looks, uh, and how, you know, people have kind of, I don't want to say forgotten who she is, but it's been a long time since we've seen her play at a real high level. Because even the year before she got hurt, she was coming off you know, sitting out a little bit. So the difference between having Paige and not having Paige um, is, you know, your chances of competing for a national championship just went up exponentially. Speaking of, uh, I mean, last year, you saw, last year UConn went through, like, literally the earliest East NCAA tournament exit that you had in quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Because prior to that, you either you're in the Final Four or championship round. Like, yeah. when Paige Beck is coming back and, and playing alongside AZ Fudge, yeah, Aaliyah Edwards, like, how, how is this a major step towards getting back to that championship pedigree that you guys had? Um, it's probably not unlike uh, a lot of other sports. Um, you always need that one person that can take what you have that's really, really good and and make it make it better. Um, you know, I don't I don't think not having not having Paige isn't the reason why we didn't we didn't win and against Ohio State. You know, we were we were good enough to win that game. We just weren't good enough that day and they were better than us that day. But I think having someone like Paige when she's playing at her best, that offsets any bad nights that somebody else might have. Um, so, yeah, we have been the 14, 14 straight Final Fours before last year. Um, I don't know that that's realistic, but that's what happened, and it was just a matter of time before we, there was going to be a year when we didn't make it. And last year happened to be the year, and she happened to not be playing. So let's see what happens this year. How is her thumb doing? Paige, why don't you look? I mean, when we looking back at the whole rehab process towards coming back with this injury, like, like, what, what, like, how can you, what, what are some words you can describe this? Um, challenging, rewarding, um, frustrating. Sort of times when you reach milestones where you would feel like, sort of, re of a relief. Um, I would say challenging and rewarding are, are two words that come to mind. Um, it sort of changes you as a person, makes you look at things in a different perspective, um, makes you appreciate all the things you do get in life and makes you stay grateful, stay humble. Um, and then just to see how hard you worked and to see the milestones you achieve um, and feel how you're getting stronger, feel more confident. Um, and then getting back on the court is like a relief of, oh, I worked this hard for this reason and um, to get back on the court healthy. So a lot of different emotions, but I think challenging and rewarding are two of the biggest things. And obviously there's like a, a many different roster changes with new players coming in and of course, I, I mean, Aaliyah Edwards and AZ Fudd, you know, coming back and expecting a high good season. I, I spoke to your teammates and said, I praise about you during rehab. Like, like what is the excitement level towards, towards being able to make, make your comeback this season? Yeah, I think we have a good mix of like what we consider, I guess, vets, um, returning guys, and then and then new people. So we have like a, a new energy, and then we have a energy of people who've been here, who've done this, um, who have experience. And so the young guys have came in eager to learn, willing to learn, very coachable. Um, and then us older guys are trying to use our experience and our knowledge of 
of what we've already gone through and how UConn is, how specific game things are, where offensive, de defensively, just schemes and, and patterns that we use. Um, so huge excitement amongst everybody, and then when you put it all together, how great it looks. So just excited for all of that. You were named the preseason player. Yeah, Aliyah, Aliyah, why don't you tell me a little bit about like how excited you are to be playing for the UConn Huskies this season coming up? Uh, super excited. I think that um, we're kind of coming in with anticipation, coming in with the full team, coming with a healthy team, and uh, coming in with just expectations to be better than we were last year. Yeah, just, um, speaking of last year, I mean, you went through a whole year without Paige Beckers, and they went to like really the earliest exit that UConn basketball well, has ever had. I mean, you're not used to see UConn lose their Sweet 16 because prior to that, they've been to at least the Final Four. Like, I want to get your perspective about like how UConn fans have bounced back from having like the earliest exit in program history for the first time in a while. Um, yeah, I think that we're better than a Sweet 16 team. Um, and we're just going to prove that this season. Um, but it's all about what we do in the off season, this preseason. I think that we've just been trying to build habits and try to hold ourselves to a different standard than we placed last year so that we can be better and excel. And with Paige Beck is finally making her comeback, having her comeback season, like, what can you tell me about, like, how, how you plan to, like, go with this with her on the court and to redevelop the chemistry that you I mean, have on the court? Um, I mean, yeah, I played with her um, freshman year, sophomore year, um, but it's been a while since I played with her back on the court, so I don't think the chemistry has ever been lost, but I think it's about just rebuilding on that and adding to it, so um, I'm super excited to be back on the court with her, um, her leadership and um, just her energy that she brings to the team and um, kind of brings out in everybody that she plays with, and I think that it's just going to be super excited for UConn Nation to have her back on the court. And, uh, and obviously, being coached by Gino, one of the longest tenured coaches in women's basketball, like how has he made a positive impact, not just in your basketball career, but in your life? Um, he's been, made a big impact to, to me as a player and as a person. Um, he's helped me learn how to be a pro and how to become a pro, which is one of my goals. And also just... I think um, I've grown as a student of the game over the years, you know, I'm going into my fourth year now. Um, and I have expectations for myself, but also for my teammates. So just for him to rely on me to be there for my team um, means a lot. And uh, to play for a coach like that, um, it's amazing. And with high expectations towards, towards like, being a, being a lottery pick or a high, higher pick in the WNBA trap, like, how do you plan to like live up to those expectations and be the WNBA caliber player? Right now, I'm just focused on playing for my teammates and playing for my coaches. You know, um, I'm going to focus in the moment, uh, focus on the Big East Conference tournament, and then also for the NCAA tournament in March, and then see what happens there. But um, really, just trying to be that leader, be that player, and be that motivator for for UConn and for my team. Um, I think we're kind of looking past last year. We keep that in our mind as a reminder of, you know, that feeling we had after we lost. You know, that uh, disappointment, anger, all that. Um, but this is a very different team that we have this year. So a lot of different pieces, a lot of new people like KK and then healthy people like Paige and Ice. So I think this team is completely different. So our expectations are the same, but, you know, we have a different mentality about us. Uh, we're learning from last year, all the things we did wrong and, you know, building on that and making sure that what happened last year doesn't happen again. If I could ask a question, I mean, what is the excitement level which Paige Becker is being able to play in her first season after we got rehabbing from the injury? If you have any conversation with her, what does she tell you about the process of returning from the season and injury? I mean, we all saw her process last year. It was tough, and she did an incredible job of not really showing it and kind of like put in her pride and everything she was going through aside to still support her team and everything we went through last year. So I think to be able to see her back on the floor has meant so much to not only her, but all of us just proud of her for, you know, going through all that and 
being positive and still being an amazing teammate through all of that. And so I think not even just Paige, but also Ice, you know, she was injured last year. So getting to be back on the floor with all of them, it's been amazing. And if anything, we learned that you can't take that for granted. So we're all super excited to have them back on the floor with us. And speaking of not taking anything for granted, I mean, what, what has Gino told you and the rest of your teammates, teammates as far as not taking the Eastern Conference for granted? Uh, even with when, when having an almost perfect season or a perfect season uh, year in and year out? Uh, you know, be more um, I mean, almost perfect is not perfect. And we're not striving per for perfection, but you know, we have very high goals set for us so in order to achieve those goals <laughs> my head is hurting uh, in, in order to achieve those goals um i lost my train of thought i have no idea what i was just saying i'm sorry oh definitely that's everything i'm sorry with the upcoming with the upcoming you coming best this season like what do you look to like bring to to, to the, this new team that has had a history of winning college basketball games and championships um, just another, just another point of energy and defense energy, and just another player, just to create more opportunities uh, for everybody else on the court. As, as long as you've been following women's basketball, especially the UConn Huskies, like, what impression you have about this working program? Um, just how every year, you know, we have evolved to the best program. You know, they're always they step on the court, competitive energy, and no matter the wins or losses, you know, they're always the same team or try to be. So. And I know it's a little cool question because people watch UConn basketball a lot, but why do you think that people should continue to watch UConn women's basketball? Um, we're a great team to follow, honestly, and just our, like I said, our competitive energy brings us a long way. And just any, you know, any younger person watching us, you know, they'll love our energy, our playing styles, and the way we play, and have our chip on our shoulder just to, you know, be eager to win that game or just be competitive against other teams.